The first time you hear that new song, it's like so, well, you either love it or you hate it. Because of your brain. It knows, man. It knows. Hey folks out there in video land, Trace here for D News. Your brain is sort of like a giant Pandora engine. You hear music and you know right away whether you like it. But why do we like some songs and we hate others? Anthony did a video about a month ago on why music makes you feel awesome. It's about brain chemistry. Definitely check that one out. But when it comes to how your brain reacts to novel music, songs you've never heard before, that's when things get a little cray. A small group of participants were played a classical piece of music that they had never heard before, with no lyrics, mind you, because they didn't want the brain to process it as language, only as harmony. While the music was played, Researchers scanned the crap out of their brains. In the left hemisphere of the brain, there are two areas that are integral for speech and language interpretation. But because there was no speech or language in this music, the right hemisphere of the brain was alight with all this processing. It turns out the right side of the brain processes music just like the other side of the brain processes language and words. But that's not all. Another study used brain scans and music to find a sort of musical preference engine. This study put people into a functional MRI machine to track their brain in real time. Then they played their favorite songs, the tunes that, you know, give you goosebumps. They found that when you hear that song, you get a flood of dopamine deep into an ancient part of your brain called the striatal system. Every song you hear your whole life is stored in a part of your long-term memory called the superior temple gyrus. And since your brain is basically yearning for dopamine release because it feels so good, it weighs this new piece of music against your musical templates. Then, using this lifetime of musical impressions, your brain decides if this is a good song or a bad song. Good songs give you a hit of dopamine and bad songs don't. The paths form based on experiences that you have had in your life already. For example, my brain. I love classic rock because it reminds me of being a kid and driving really fast with my dad with the windows down. These memories add to my dopamine releases and build up my musical template impressions. We are constantly making new templates to refer to and adding memory impressions to our music library, just like an online recommendation service. The question I have is why? What in our evolution drove us to follow these musical templates and what happens when we have brain interfaces that can read these templates directly? I mean, that's really what Pandora and Spotify are trying to do, but externally. I mean, you still have to click thumbs up. But someday, they'll just read your brains. Would you only want to hear songs that your brain knows that you'd like? Or have you ever heard a song that you really hated and then it later kind of grew on you? Tell us all about it and get musical down in the comments and tweet at us at DNews, all three of us see it. Make sure you stop by our Google Hangout as well, April 23rd, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Get your questions ready. I'm Trace, thanks for watching. See you next time.